Hey everyone, good evening. And uh, today we're gonna be cooking our butter chicken. I've got some helpers here. I have Paul, I have Subi behind camera, whatever number that is, and Mary behind camera, whatever number that is. <laughs> so we've got a couple of cam and we also have a camera over the top of the pan as well. So there's three camera views. Uh, so we're, we're gonna have fun and uh, start cooking our uh, butter chicken. So what we're gonna do, I've, I've kind of prepped a little bit ahead of time. So I've already chopped up my onions. I like to chop them up as small as possible because that way they cook down quicker. Uh, but as you're gonna see later on, I'm gonna blend it anyway because, uh, and you don't have to blend it. I just prefer to blend the uh, sauce once before I put the chicken back in so that the, uh, the sauce is much uh, smoother and creamier. So right now I've uh, chopped up the onions pretty small. I've also cut some chicken up, have some cilantro here, and I've got everything else ready here. So let me put this pot on. We'll get it heated up. So what I'm gonna do first, oh no, let me do this first. Uh, before we do that, I wanna uh, marinate. And normally, if I was doing this at home, normally I would do this for probably uh, at least an hour, maybe two hours, but because we don't really have time to sit here and wait for this to uh, marinate, I'm just gonna do it, mix it up, and then we'll get it done. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna put in is uh, my yogurt. It's just plain yogurt. Uh, usually when you put this in for an hour, an hour, an hour and a half, two hours in the marinade, it helps uh, tenderize the chicken a lot better. So I'm just gonna put, I forget what I say in my uh, directions, but that's probably about enough. And then, whoops. Grab my spoons. I've got garam masala. Now I gave you instructions on how to make your own garam masala, which is hard work. If you can get it locally, which I can, there's a, an Indian store here by the university, which is where I got this. Uh, Winko used to have it, but they stopped carrying it for some reason. So I'm gonna put in about a teaspoon of this, actually a teaspoon and a half. Then I'm gonna put in, now if you look at the instructions or look at the uh, ingredients I gave you originally, I don't cook it, uh, I like it spicy, so I've spiced it down. Uh, normally I use a mixture of Kashmiri chili, which is kind of very red, but not too hot. And then I use some uh, hot chili to bring the heat up. What I've just decided to do here is I'm just using the Kashmiri. So I'm gonna put um, a teaspoon and a half of Kashmiri in there as well. Yep, about roughly teaspoon and a half. Okay, I have a question for you. Yeah. Should we have had our chicken cut ahead of time? No, I can wait for you to cut it. Okay. Okay, yeah, I just, do you wanna, I just cut it into, like strips, like my little finger. But you can cut it however you want. You can cut it in cubes. Um, I do it in little fingers like that because for me it cooks quicker. So. Oh, okay. And then, so I've done the yogurt, the uh, garam masala, the, the uh, chili, or the Kashmiri, in this case, Kashmiri chili. And then I'm gonna do about a teaspoon of salt. And then I found a glove so I don't have to put my hand in there. So if you look, you wanna, that's what it looks like with all the stuff put in. So what I'm gonna do now, I was telling the guys here that I don't like touching chicken. So I got some gloves. <laughs> I did cut it up barehanded, but it really is gross. So here, what I'm gonna do is just massage it around with my hand, make sure all the spices and the uh, yogurt get on every surface as much as possible. So. So that's pretty much done. If you look there, pretty much mixed up. So I'm gonna leave that for a couple of minutes. And the way we're gonna do this is, um, I'll leave that for a couple of minutes. Not ordinarily, I'd leave it for an hour or so. But what we're gonna do, leave it a couple of minutes. So I'm gonna get this heated up and then we're gonna fry these in batches. You can't fry them all at once because the, the chicken just takes the heat away from the pan and then they don't, they don't get browned up very well. So what I'm gonna do is put some, oil on here. No matter what kind of oil to cook the chicken in? What, chi what oil do you like using? Well, I use 
I use olive oil. A lot of people just use vegetable oil. Some people use grapeseed oil. Uh, my preference is olive oil or uh, just plain vegetable oil. Even oh. canola oil works too. Okay, because I had sesame seed oil or sesame that oil. That works as well. That works as well. So I'm going to put about uh, enough in there to cook the chicken. Let that heat up a little bit. Uh, in my uh, recipe, or in my recipe, in the ingredients, I think I told you that you needed to have some cashew uh, nuts. I've had these sitting here in water for a while. The reason I have them in water is because I'm going to put them in later to cook, but then uh, they, they get a little soggy and they'll blend up easier in the blender. Uh, so I've got this, another pan here. Uh, this is the raw stuff. I'm going to cook it and then I'm going to put it in here after it's... And I'm not going to fully cook it in this pan here because we're putting it... You know, so once it goes back in the sauce, that will cook it up as well. So let me uh, get some in. Oh, you know what? I forgot my ginger garlic paste too, sorry. No! That's okay, I'm gonna put that in real quick. Just a second batch will have it in. Does that go in the... Yeah, in the chicken. And don't worry about any caramelization on the pan, that's good, because uh, when we put the sauce in later, that will uh, all come out. So right now, I'm just gonna cook the uh, chicken uh, I just want to get it browned. I don't really want to cook it all the way through. Um, also, uh, because it's going to be cooking in the sauce when we do the sauce in a moment. So uh, I'm just going to spin you these around. See, oil to coat the bottom of the pan. Say again. Just enough oil to coat the bottom of the pan. Yeah, about put about three three tablespoons, maybe. I don't know how big your pan is, but put about three tablespoons. Okay. We fingers. I've got a, I don't know what that is. What would you say that is, a 12 inch pan? I think it's about 12 inch pan here. So you, I don't know how well you can see, but it should be, if I bring it up, you should be able to see that browning. Is that good? You should be able to see some browning, see? And that's what I want. Um, and that's why you can't put it all in at once. Because if you put it all in at once, the cold chicken, even if you've had it sitting at room temperature, the it, it just sucks the heat out of the pan and then it doesn't give a good brown, a uh, good browning on it. Okay. So I'm gonna get my other pan here. My next batch in. I'm probably going to do this in, yeah, probably three batches. How's yours going? Okay, you, you need it about just medium or a little bit higher than medium heat. You want to get that pan good and hot so it actually fries the outside or browns the outside. Okay. Okay. Got on that. that. That's, if I bring, if I lift it up, um, can you, that's about how much sizzling I'm having on it, if you can see that. Okay. Yeah. So you don't want it, you don't want it doing any more than that. That's about the right. And you don't want to cook it too fast. You don't want it at high because it will just, the chicken just gets um, uh, tight. Okay, and now I'm gonna do my last batch.
put in too much oil in, you can always, uh, actually, if you do put too much oil in, when the sauce cooks up, the oil actually separates and comes to the surface, so it's easy to spoon out. Now, do you use anything to be glazed uh, while I'm with a pan? No, we're gonna do that with the onions and the tomato sauce. So, <laughs> two tablespoons of uh, butter, I'm gonna put that in the pan, get that melted. And then I'm also just gonna need a little bit more oil because when I put the onions in, we need a little bit more oil. So I'll get that all melted. Nearly there. Put butter in. Yeah, I put two tablespoons. I, yeah, you know they have a uh, lines in the paper to show you where to cut them. You just put two tablespoons in. We're gonna put two more tablespoons in later, which is why this is called butter chicken because there's a lot of butter. In. If you're on health food, this is not the dish to be eating. This is a rich, tasty dish. Okay, so if you look at my, uh, I've got it all melted now. So I'm gonna put my onions in. So right now, uh, are you doing your onions right now? Yes, sir. Okay. And at this point here, I'm gonna put uh, a tablespoon of ginger garlic paste in. Okay, so now I need, I mean, do you have uh, tomato paste? Yes, sir, I do. You're gonna need, Okay, you're gonna need about a, a big tablespoon and just mix it with about 50% water because it's a little thick to cook the way it is out of the can, but if you mix it with water, it loosens it up. Here's the tomato paste. I've mixed it up with a bit of water so you can see it's a lot looser. Okay. So I'm gonna put that I'm gonna put that in now. And I'm gonna get a little bit of water. I like to I like to have a pot of, or a cup of water close by so that I can loosen stuff up if it looks like it's getting too thick. So So uh, your onions should be, if you mash them, they should uh, break up now. They should be cooked soft enough that if you mash them, they're gonna uh, squash, so which is good. And you may also notice uh, the oil is kind of separating right now. Do you notice that on yours? I leave it alone long enough. Okay. Put a little bit more water. So that's what this is looking like right now. So I'm gonna blend it in a second. So I've done the uh, um, tomato paste. Now I'm gonna put in my cashews. Where my cashews go? Yeah. You drain the water, you do. Yeah, just don't, don't put the water in with it, just take them out. And then my can of tomatoes, uh, actually tomato sauce. So 
So right now, and you'll see that this uh, tomato sauce mixture is now deglazed. Can you see it's deglazed in my pan? Anything that was uh, on the pan from the chicken, it will yes. come deglazed and comes in. So all of that flavor comes into the sauce. Okay, I don't know. Let me see if I can lift it up. Yes, perfect. I'll handle. Yeah, there you go. So you see, you can see that it's now deglazing it all and it's going into the sauce. Okay, so I'm gonna do the sauce a little bit longer, maybe a couple more minutes. Let it get. I like to see the, uh, you know, I mentioned the oil was separated a few moments ago. I like to actually see it separate on the, on the uh, tomatoes too. So you, if you watch it uh, around the edges, you'll start to see the oil separating out. Give this maybe two or three more minutes, then I'm gonna take the sauce, I'm gonna break it up and uh, blend it. So uh, what I'll do is I'll do it in batches in here, blend it up, and you can blend it as much as you want. You can blend it really smooth, or you, I like to leave it a little bit of uh, uh, grittiness or consistency in it, but it, it's entirely up to you. So I think this is about ready to do, so I'm gonna take this over there. I don't have a power cord. No, I don't have a power socket here. Okay. So I'm gonna take this over there. I'll be right back and I'm gonna blend it up. So it's blended up. And I would say it's the consistency of like a thick pea soup. Like it's not runny, but it's, it's also, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's thick, but it's, it's, uh, it's, not, um, it's not too thick. So I'm just gonna pour it back into the exact same pan. Right. Yep. I'm doing it all in one pan, except for all these pans I'm making dirty doing the marination and stuff like this. But yeah, this is all done in one pan. So I've got that back on. It looks a little thick. Is it okay to thin it down a little bit? Yeah, yeah. if it's too thick, like if, if it's thicker than a, an average pea soup, just put a little bit of water in. In fact, I suggest, like I said, keep a, a jug or a pot of water next to you because uh, you, you can always put more water in, and if it gets too watery, just uh, you know, boil it off. So um, you don't, don't want to get it too watery, but uh, yeah, if, if it's too thick, just put a little bit of water to get the consistency you want and just stir it in. Yeah, but putting water in is not going to affect the uh, flavor. Ooh. Okay, have I got heat on this? Yeah, there we go. So I'm heating it back up. It's going to take a few, uh, about a minute or so to heat it back up because it's obviously cooled down with the cold water and the blend. So once this gets heated back up, I still have my chicken. All right, you still see my chicken there? Okay. So if you've got it back in the pan, I've got it just simmering very slightly. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a, a teaspoon of salt, uh -huh. right? So I'm putting my teaspoon of salt. Then we're gonna do a teaspoon of uh, garam masala, okay. which I've lost, there it is. And then you're gonna do, you've got paprika, so do two teaspoons of paprika. Once you've got all that stuff in, stir it in. I should have this bubbling a little bit. So stir the spices into, into the sauce. I put in the original ingredients two, two teaspoons of sugar. Uh, normally people like this sweet. I don't like it that sweet, so I'm only gonna put two, uh, one teaspoon in, but you can put two in. Um, yeah, it, it, two teaspoons is just too sweet for me. And the reason that being is that I prefer stuff spicy rather than sweet, but some of the Indian dishes uh, have that sweetness and spiciness together. So I've just put that sugar in right now. And then you should have two butters, uh, two butters, two uh, tablespoons of butter sitting around somewhere. Do you have that? Yes, sir. Okay, pop that in as well. See, my, mine is getting a little bit thick now. You, if you notice the way the bubbles are going. So uh -huh. I'm just gonna pop a little bit of water in to thin it down. And your butter should melt fairly quickly in there. So once your butter's melted,
once your butter's, yeah, my butter's melted now. So now I'm gonna add in uh, the uh, cream. I'm gonna measure it like this <laughs> by eye. But yeah, so put it in now. If, if your butter's melted, put this in now. And what you're gonna see is the color of the dish is gonna go um, a lot more orangey because it's gonna lighten up that red tomato-y uh, um, color. So if you, you see how mine's changing color, I've still got some of the dark stuff, but you can see it's getting lighter by putting that cream in. So get that stirred around. And once this, uh, once this starts bubbling all over, I'm gonna put the chicken back in, okay? Okay, so you see mine is bubbling now? So I'm gonna put my chicken in at this point. When I put the chicken in now, that's gonna take away a lot of the heat. So I'm just gonna cover this chicken up in the sauce. And let it, I'm gonna turn it down a little bit because I only want it to simmer. I don't want it, I don't want it going crazy. So let me lift it up for you. Can you see that? I've now got the chicken in. So I'm gonna let this uh, come back up to a very low simmer so that, and we're gonna cook it for maybe five minutes. So it's gonna finish off cooking the chicken. Um, I'm gonna go grab a teaspoon and that what I always suggest you do is give it a quick taste. Most times I find that I either don't have enough salt. Or generally speaking, I'm really tasting it for the salt um, to see if it's salty enough. And, and you'll be surprised if you don't put enough salt in, it, the, it doesn't bring the flavor out. But, but if you put too much salt in, you ruin it. But it, you've got to have the right amount of salt where the, it brings the flavor out. Not enough salt, it just is flat. So let me go and get a teaspoon so I can taste this. Yeah, mine needs a little bit more salt. So I'm gonna throw that in and then stir it in. Basically ready now, I'm just gonna let it sit and uh, simmer for a little bit. And then we're good to go. Thanks for joining me, bye. Thank you for watching In the Kitchen with Sweet, featuring John Baker and his butter chicken recipe. If you like it, please let us know. And be sure to check out our website at cetrain.isu.edu.